Welcome back everyone. So today's video is going to be an intro to Spline. So Spline is an amazing tool which allows you to create 3D models with very minimal effort. Basically it's like a 2D software for creating 3D and that is what they claim. And yeah I found it really intuitive and easy to create 3D models on this. So I thought why not just create an interesting tutorial on this. I was just searching through what to create and we often see these 3D mockup presentations to display our visual design. So I thought why not just create this and it's really easy to create this. We can actually create complicated ones like these with all the buttons and all these uh, color of an exact device. But for this tutorial, just to keep it quick and simple, I'll just create this one, what we see here, just a white device. We'll try to create this on the software. So let's get started. But before that, I'll just take a screen. I'll just copy this up. So we'll use the screen as a reference to create the device. So getting back to Spline here, once you install and sign up for this tool, you'll be basically ending up on this screen where you have four sample projects. You can just open it and play around with it just to get a hang of it. And once you feel comfortable, just come back here and click on this plus icon or you can either click on this new file here. You just have a rectangle angle as a basic shape here and let me just give a quick intro about the layout here it's very similar to any design tool like figma or sketch you have your layers on your left and then you have the properties on the right and at the middle you have the canvas where you create the stuff this plus button here has all the list of objects that you can add to the canvas and the ones on the top are the very important or the quick tools that you can use and that is a quick overview about the layout so let's get started the screenshot i just copied just click on command v and that will paste the screenshot here so this we'll use it as a reference and also a quick thing about the rotation and all stuff this is the front view and you have the options to directly switch to the top view the left view and all that stuff you can either use this or to control the angle just press on the option key keep it pressed and just click and drag and that is how you can rotate the particular object in 3d so this being just a flat surface you don't see any depth or extrusion to it so to move a particular object in this you can either use these three uh, arrows that is this one is for the y-axis and the red one is for for the x-axis and the blue one that you see here so to get the view of it just rotate it and here as you can see this is the z-axis so you can click on that and move it and that is a way to move it and then you have these three black circles kind of thing that you see here even those can be used so that will move the object in two axis at once for example this one as I told you is the x-axis and this one is a y-axis so if you use this thing you can move the object in both x and y-axis as you can see here and the same thing goes with these two and that is about the movement and then you can use this one here which is basically for the rotation just click on that and then you'll have this kind of an axis so you can either rotate it with these three axes so those are the different uh, ways you can rotate and use the layout here so I'll just undo everything and get back to the normal state and let's get started here so what I'll do is I'll place this in the center so I'll use the Z axis and move it to the back and we'll try to resize this to fit the screen here so as you can see I'll just increase it a bit more than the screen and that should act as our device. So we have that already. Now let's get the screen to the front. Let's rename this for better understanding. So I'll click on the phone layer and what we'll do is extrusion is the one which creates a 3D feel to it. So now as you can see it's flat but as I keep increasing the extrusion value you can see that it has a thickness to it. And to see that in a proper 3D view what you're going to do is change the lighting here to physical. Now you actually get a 3D feel right. Now the next thing what we're going to do is we're going to create this iPhone here. So we want the rounded corners. So I'll increase the rounded corners here. 56 looks good and then moving on the next one we're going to do is we don't want the sharp uh, edges here so as you saw in the iPhone uh, we want that uh, rounded smooth edge for that what we're going to do is click on the phone object here and increase the bevel value and as you can see that gives a angled edge here and to again curve that what we're going to use is the bevel sides this will basically round the curves make sure that you increase it completely to 10 and that will give you a perfectly smooth edge and to increase it even more what we're going to do is just increase this and just reduce the extrusion and then we can have a normal thickness of a device. So now as you can see it looks uh, pretty much good but as you can see it's very wide and tall so we'll just adjust that for now. So that looks good to me. Next what we can do is give the rounded corners to the screen also. So that looks good and now the next thing what we're going to do is as you can see there's a gap between the screen and the device. So what we're going to do is click on the screen here and move the Z value so that it exactly touches the device. Uh, yeah that looks good. As you can see it already starts looking amazing. So now already you can basically rotate this and see it in different angles. So when I put it in this angle you can see that the top is wider and the bottom is very uh, narrow. That is because you're in the orthographic view and once I click on this and change it to a perspective view you can basically see that it behaves exactly with the perspective so now it looks perfect 
So that is the view basically what you want. As you can see, there's a glaring issue on the screen and that is because your screen is very close to the device. So what you have to do in such cases is just click on the screen here and move it a bit to the forward. Then as you can see, there's no such issue. That basically happens when the screen and the device or like two objects uh, collide each other in a 3D space. That is the issue basically happening here. So now as you can see, everything looks good. Let's go ahead and add your connector to the bottom. What I'll do is I'll use the, the bottom view here. Now basically you're seeing the bottom of the device. And now what you gotta do is click on the rectangle here and draw a rectangle right here. And what I'll do is I'll give it a black color. And one more thing what you can do is give it rounded corners and try to align it somewhere to the center. There you go, we already have a port at the bottom, but as you can see, it is somewhere far away. So now as you can see, it's perfectly on the device. So everything looks good. As I told you, if you want to make it incomplete, more details, you can go ahead and add buttons to the sides and all that stuff. You can also add a notch on the top, which is very simple. Just use the rectangle tool. Uh, let's go ahead and add that also. I don't think the tutorial will be very long, even if I do this. So what you'll do is just use a rectangle and give it rounded corners and you can use the color as complete white. And you can make sure that you remove the shadow for this. So what you gotta do is go to cast shadows and click on no. Lighting should be physical and that will match the device there. So as you can see, it's very far away right now. I think the rotations are causing a problem. So what you can do is change all these rotation values to zero. And now it's exactly reset. And now let's try to align it. So yeah, that looks pretty good. Uh, you can align it properly and do all that stuff. But just to keep this tutorial really quick, I'll move ahead and create the next thing. So what you saw the next thing is we have a white background here. So what I'll do is I'll click on the empty space here and change the background. We have the background here and we'll change it to complete white or maybe a bit grayish. Yeah, that looks good. Just select all these, group it with command G and there you have a group. And the next thing what you got to do is just choose some screens, just some random random screens. So I'll just copy this. I'll paste it here. I'll let you know what I'll do next. So just copy a couple of screens here. So once you just uh, copy and paste it, you can just go ahead and delete it. I'll let you know why. So I just copied and pasted it here. And now once you paste this here, this basically acts as a material. Now let's lay this in perspective. So I'll use the rotate tool here and try to angle it to the position that we want. So I'll try to lay the devices like this here and just do a copy and a paste. So I paste it for four times and there you have all your devices. Now you got to align it on the surface. So I'll use these different tools here and try to align it. So as you saw, it could take a bit of a time, but once you get a hang of it, it's really easy. And the next thing, as I told you, I just copied the screens here and deleted it, right? So what we got to do is how to apply it is very simple. Just click on the screen here. So the first one is selected here and go to the texture of the material section here. Click on the texture here and there you go. You have all your screens that we just copy pasted. Those act as materials. So all you got to do is just click on them and that gets applied. So I go to the next one and I choose the screen and that's it. You can go ahead and change the perspective. As you can see, it's not perfect. I think I need to align this again. You can basically set it in different angles and see if it is perfectly aligned or not. There you go, you have all set up right now and you can just go ahead and click on export here. You can choose the different types. So if you want an image, just click on image and you also can add some lighting and all stuff to get a shadow and all that effects. So you have your lightings here, choose a directional light and just place it wherever you want. You can make a different tutorial on that to explain even more things in detail. But this is a very quick overview of how we can use this to create amazing 3D mockups for your presentations. Uh, if you want to present it on your website, you have a public URL. Once you export this, this, you basically get a public URL which you can basically share with your friends or your clients and you also get an iframe which you can use to embed on your website so that is really cool and also you can export it as an image for your presentations and all stuff so I click on image here and you can choose your formats here so let it be JPEG and set your perspective or which angle you want or the perspective that you want and all that stuff when you're good to go just click on export so it asks for the location, so I'll give it as desktop here and I click on save. And once I go to the desktop, you can see that you have the file here. And so it has a very good detail and it looks amazing.
you can do a lot of stuff here like for example in this screen as you see if you want to raise a particular screen and you want to highlight that you can also do that just click on the screen and go to the rotate property and basically rotate it in whichever angle you want so if you want to give it this kind of a priority here you can do that again align it using this option here that is how you can raise the device and give a priority to the device to a particular screen here. So those are different things you can do. That's it for this video guys. I hope you found it really informative and helpful. That's it. Thanks for watching.